Welcome back to Batman right here at Comic Storian, your home for audio dramas of your favorite comic books read to you dramatically, your favorite video games told to you in a narrative fashion, or your favorite recaps of your favorite movie series. Today, we're going to be covering a solo Batman story, at least as it stands right now, and that story is known as Arkham Knight. This was DC's attempt to introduce the Arkham Knight into the proper comic book continuity, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's definitely not who you're expecting it to be. They definitely did not turn the Red Hood into the Arkham Knight. I'm just going to tell you straight up right now before you get into this and get super disappointed. But I do recommend you stick around to see what the new version of the Arkham Knight is and what the Arkham Knight's origin is because they are now in DC Comics. If you enjoy this, please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to give this video a like because you too can get your own Arkham Knight battle suit if you like this video. As a patrol unit arrives at the scene of Gotham City Park, the officers are left scratching their heads as to what they're seeing. One of the officers asks, What are they supposed to do here? There's got to be thousands. Gordon tells them to round up some more people. They're going to bag and tag each of them. And the officer asks if he's sure because it's going to take. But Jim stops him telling him, All of them. Gordon then sighs as he makes a call on his phone. And as the other end is picked up, he says that he's pretty sure he isn't the only one with a bat problem. Batman tells him that it's the same here. Hundreds of dead bats scattered all over the place. He then begins dissecting several of the bats that died inside of the cave. And none of the 57 bats give him an answer as to why they all suddenly dropped dead. Right now, there is only one person who can possibly give some insight as to what is going on. So a short while later across town, Batman visits the offices of Francine Langstrom, wife of the man bat Kirk Langstrom, to learn about how this could have possibly happened. As he arrives, he finds Francine in a panic, telling herself that she needs to stop. She needs to find a way to join them. Before Batman has a chance to react, Francine injects herself with the man bat serum and begins to transform, shrieking as her wings unfold. Batman jumps on her back, telling her, wait, and Francine leaps out of the window, sending the both of them barreling towards the street. He quickly throws out a battering, wrapping it around Francine's head, telling himself that he's been through this enough with Kirk to know where this is going. As he begins to pull on the wires and guide Francine, she begins to fly as if she has a purpose, as if she's trying to go somewhere specific. After flying through a building, Francine then crashes through the windows of the Gotham Park Zoo bat exhibit. She rolls on the ground shouting, they need help, so many are dying, help me. Batman asks, how? And soon Francine begins to black out from the man bat serum. He hits her with the antidote to revert her back, however, she still loses consciousness. So Batman picks up the body, radioing to Alfred that he's going to need a gyro lock on his location. He'll be bringing in, but just then there's a violent rumble and the sky lights up as if it was day. Batman asks to check the satellite for seismic forces and blast damage, but Alfred tells him that there are no casualties or actual explosive detonations. There was only an intense and powerful light that was ignited and it seems to be self-generating in the lower atmosphere after a concussive wave. So Batman responds, Someone just created a small sun over Gotham. I'm going to investigate it and... But as Batman swings out on his grappling hook, a small disc is thrown, cutting the wire, which is almost impossible to do. He catches himself as he lands, but suddenly men and women in suits of armor begin to attack him, shouting, Burn bright! Burn back the dark! Batman throws out his batterings at the knights that are firing arrows on the high ground, but the batterings just bounce off their armor. With no other choice, Batman tackles into one of the knights, taking the battering, wrapping it around one of the pillars of the stone building, and he leaps over the ledge. The knight is pulled out of harm's way, but as Batman lands on the lower ground, dozens of arrows begin to hit him in the back and the legs. More knights appear. They are driven, disciplined, and even worse, dangerous. Batman fights back the knights as best as he can when he spots one knight different from the rest watching. He turns back, throwing a smoke grenade at that mysterious knight, but it deflects off their shield, covering the entire field in a thick haze. Suddenly, Batman feels a heavy boot step down on his neck, and the knight in blue tells him, A new day dawns in Gotham. It's time for the shadows to start running from themselves. Batman struggles under the weight, demanding to know, What have you unleashed on my city? And the Blue Knight asks, Your city? I don't recall anyone ever having given it to you, Batman. In my mind, Gotham's a victim. A kidnapped victim, and you're the kidnapper. 
The Blue Knight raises their sword to finish the fight, but suddenly is shot from behind by hundreds of flying bullets. The GCPD surround the place, shouting for everyone not to move, but Batman calls out, Put down your weapons before this escalates! Some of the knights turn their focus to the officers, and they begin to launch their arrows at them. So Batman tries to subdue them, but several of the officers are hit before the knights have a chance to get wrapped up. The Blue Knight yells out, ENOUGH! And as they shield one of the struck officers from being shot by a misfired weapon, Batman stares and the Blue Knight tells the bystanders and the officers, You have a choice. Batman and the Blue Knight lock gazes as they both get ready to attack. But after what feels like an eternity, Batman lowers his batarangs, telling the Knight, Another time. And the Blue Knight tells him, Yes, another time. And then drops a small flash bomb. Batman barely has enough time to shield his eyes before all of the knights disappear. So he pulls out some of the arrows, signaling to the Batmobile to come to his location. He wobbles over to it, and Gordon runs over to help Batman inside. He says that he needs to track down those knights, and Gordon tells him, Yeah, yeah, but you can barely stand. Now get the hell out of here before I take you in. Hey, car, if you're listening, take this damn fool home. The hatch to the Batmobile closes, and the computer responds, Affirmative, taking fool home. Later... Back at the Batcave, Alfred says that he would appreciate a little less movement, otherwise his blood will shoot out faster than it can be pumped in. Batman continues looking under the microscope at the arrowheads, stating that these match the properties of his own suit. That explains why they were able to cleave through my special fibers. The question is, how did this knight match my suit and find a way to make me vulnerable to arrows? Damien Ska stating, you were going too easy on those knights right from the get-go. Should have crippled some of them and wrapped it up quickly before the crossfire situation set in. Batman asks, is that right? Any idea on what appears to be an A on the shield? And Damien tells him, nope, but I do have a fix on the remnants of the day bomb. Some parts splashed into Aparo Bay and are still giving off high energy signatures. Maybe some of those pieces can help lead us to these King Arthur freaks. So a short while later, Damien swims down to find the debris of the bomb, but... Not long after finding it, several knights appear attempting to recover the pieces as well. One of them fires at a net, indicating that they plan on keeping Damien alive, which he'll do the same, just in a more harsh way. He drops the diving suit and begins to take on each of the knights in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and just as it seems like the last one is fleeing, Damien is struck from behind by a taser. The blue knight from before radios back to make room for one more on the sub. And later, as Damien opens up his eyes, he sees a tapestry with Batman having a rather mean look, and he tells them, that's new and different. Batman mad at me at Needlepoint. The Blue Knight tells him, It's a little raw and crude, yes, but it's from many years ago. This place is a castle in a dungeon. A place of happiness and a place of suffering. You are Robin, a songbird, a creature tainted by the dark. This is your chance to redeem yourself and join the side of the light. We'll return later for your decision. The Blue Knight leaves and Damien yells out, I have my own crusade to worry about, Sir Yapalot. He begins to rock back and forth in his chair, hitting the candle stand and dropping the flame to his hand. He then holds it until the ropes burn off, and he quickly jumps up into the ventilation shaft above. A short while later, he continues his crawl, stating that he's been at this forever. And if he doesn't find an access shaft soon, he'll have to go back. Just then, an opening appears above him, and he starts to climb out. He counts in his head, stating that it felt like six stories now to push the grate aside end. And as the grate moves, several villains begin to talk, and the Blue Knight says to him, you're as stubborn as you are persistent. It would appear that you are having doubts about stepping into the light. If so, then allow us to try harder to convince you. Please see us for who we are. Just then, the Blue Knight begins to take off their helmet. Damien looks up at a woman with short blonde hair and blue eyes, telling her, That is not what I was expecting. Even without the helmet, though, I have no idea who you are, and I really don't care. The woman tells him that she does care, though, and that's why she can't stand by and do nothing while he's placed in danger by the creature of the night. Damien tells her, Right, your words don't mean much when arrows are knocked and aimed at my head. The woman tells the other knights to lower their weapons, but one says that the kid took them down so hard that he shattered his collarbone. Damien laughs. Ha ha, I thought I recognized some of you. I take bad guys down. End of story. The knight shouts in frustration, firing the arrow, hitting Damien in the shoulder. The villains of Arkham Asylum all cheer and shout to tear the kid apart, and the woman spins around with her sword, breaking the bow, slashing into the knights. She calls out again to lower their weapons, but Damien grabs the arrow in him, yanking it out, rolling to the dropped bow and pulling it back, aiming it at the woman knight. 
For the third time, the woman tells everyone, lower your weapons. And Damien tells them, you should listen to her and probably get that cauterized. But please, please, someone make a move. The woman holds up her sword and then points it to the door, telling him, you are free to go. So Damien slowly gets up asking, you're letting me go without a fight? You're not even going to try and hold me here and beat Batman? The woman tells him that Batman and her are fated to meet whether he is a part of the equation or not. This is a good faith gesture only between them, a gesture for him to remember when the eclipse comes. She expects to knight him in the bright day on a bended knee, his face free of a mask. Damien holds his shoulder as he walks to the stairs, telling her, I wouldn't count on it. And a short while later, he climbs atop a sky rise, shining his symbol into the sky to let Batman know where he is. And within moments, Batman appears, telling him, this isn't your normal place for your signal. What happened? Damien tells him that he got ambushed by the knights, and the one leading them is a woman. She took off her mask and let him see her face, wanted to build trust. She thinks that he could be a future ally, and other than general features, he couldn't tell her age range. Batman then asks about his escape, and Damien says, I didn't. She let me go. We need to get back to the cave and gear up and plan on how we're going to take out this Arkham Knight. Later at the cave, Damien sketches out the woman, and Batman says that he forgets how impressive Damien's drawing skills are. So Damien tells him and that it comes in handy on occasion. It's all thanks to Mother and the assorted teachers she brought to the island over the years. Learned a lot from Mr. Chavez in art class. He was great. Shame Mother dropped him and the other teachers into the middle of the ocean. As the computer begins to scan the Damien sketch, it comes back that there are no matches in federal, state, or city databases. The two then suit up in their new armor design to help deflect the knight's arrows. And Batman says to paint him a picture as to what they're facing. So Damien tells him, you know, knights, armor, specialized weapons, stuff you already saw. The knights are a small army that's pretty much lockstep with the woman's vision. Disciplined them quickly and severely. Batman asks, what is her vision? And Damien tells him that he's not sure. Mentioned something about an eclipse. Once they're ready, Batman and Damien go through the sewers to where Damien was held at the Knight's stronghold under Arkham, only to find nothing. Damien looks around, telling Batman that they're gone, and then a man from the shadows says, That's because they'll follow my daughter, Astra to Arkham, to the ends of the Earth. After a few moments, Batman drops several pellets illuminating the room so they could shed some light and to get an answer to their first question. Your daughter is the Arkham Knight? Dr. Arkham says yes. And Batman tells him, all right, let's hear it from the beginning. As Damien looks at one of the tapestries, Arkham says that Astrid kept a visual diary of her life here. I thought I'd burn them all. Anyway, it began many years ago when I first met Astrid's mother, Ingrid. We both worked in the field of medicine, helping those troubled and damaged souls in Arkham Asylum. Even though those people were bad guys, they never did anything bad to Ingrid. They all knew that she was there to help them. Time went on, and we eventually wed, and we were expecting a child. However, one day something happened. A riot broke out as new patients were being transferred into Arkham, and they overcame the guards. Ingrid was days away from giving birth, and she was trapped in the middle of the fighting. Through the shouting and the yelling, there was a scream like no other. One that came from my newly born daughter. The villains would help bring my daughter into the world, and they actually protected her and Ingrid. It was a beautiful moment until the battering ripped through Clayface's mud curtain and severed Ingrid's jugular vein. The asylum fell silent. That was until Grundy's rage exploded, as did the new transfer patient's head. Once Grundy stopped him from throwing another battering that was left lying around, the Joker and everyone went back to their cells before the guards even had to escort them back. After that, I kept Astrid close by and never let her leave the asylum. She even befriended many of the residents. Even the Joker would read stories to her. But Astrid never stayed still. She was always wandering and exploring, and she saw things that no child should ever see. She found things that the previous Arkham generations decided to conceal within the walls. And one of those nights during her adventures, she found the video images from the night of the riot and saw that Batman was the one who had the batarangs. She saw those images and believed that he was the one who took her mother away. To her, the symbol of the bat represented fear and terror. She learned to embrace it and eventually faced it. The more that we tried therapy, though, the harder Astrid pushed back. Batman says, If she reviewed those images, she must have seen that it was a patient who grabbed one of my batarangs on the floor. And Arkham tells her, No, I never told her. I fed the fire. It was easier for me to blame Batman than blame myself for not being there. She was already surrounded by people who loved her and hated Batman. Batman then says, That explains why Astrid sees me as a curse hanging over the city. And Damien laughs, 
Haven't we all at some point? Batman stares at his son and Damien apologizes. I was just kidding. A few moments later, Batman begins to investigate, asking why would Astrid want to leave in a hurry? This was her home. And soon Batman comes to a pipe, knocking on it, asking if anyone else can hear that. He rips the pipe off the wall, stating that the pipe should have running water there in the sub-basement. And inside the pipe are maps of the city, all marked with different natural heights around the ground, clearly set for obvious defensive purposes. Meanwhile, over at the Arkham City Observation Center, Astrid looks up, seeing her vision, stating that this is it. The time has come to enter our new citadel of light. Forward, Knights of Sun. Take your positions and burn back the dark. Arcane, I want earthworks created as we discuss for additional fortifications. So Arcane places his hand on the ground, telling her, as you wish, substance of all that is dead, I command you to rise and rise from the dirt, my unmen. As he finishes, the giant undead creatures start to rise out of the ground, mostly made out of dirt and bone. And soon a group of followers hold a small box, stating that they found a sphere of light. Astrid tells them thank you for the dedication that they have shown and the sacrifice to their sight. Now stay close, they will be needed shortly. Dr. Phosphorus, are you in position? Phosphorus tells her that he is indeed, and he only waits her command to burn back the dark. He then looks up at the bat-shaped shadow on the ground, stating that he's afraid that that time might be soon. Astrid looks up at Batman and Damien flying in, responding with, Yes, I see that it is time. Astrid turns and calls out to the archers to fire the first volley, and arrows fill the night sky as Batman quickly notices that the arrows are not normal arrows. They are smoke screen arrows. With visibility low, Batman and Damien are forced to land right in the middle of the group of knights ready to fight. Once they're on the ground, Astrid calls out to Arcane that it's time. So Arcane places his hand on the ground, just as Batman and Damien get their footing, and the earth begins to rumble and creates giant roots and vine walls. Damien asks, how are we supposed to get through this? And Batman tells him, we just need to stop these unmen from growing any bigger. Damien then asks, what are you going to do? And Batman tells him, the one thing that Astrid doesn't expect. Cut straight through the middle. As he hacks his way through the roots, leaving Damien to fight the unmen, he comes to an opening and asks Damien for a status report, where Damien tells him, I'm almost ready! But before Batman could get any further, he's hit by Phosphorus' flames, burning away Batman's oxygen. So Damien tells him not to worry so much. I'm taking out the kindling delivery system now! He pulls out a small pill from his utility belt, shoving it down Arcane's throat, and he quickly jumps away. Arcane grabs at his throat, asking, What was that? And a second later, a small explosion goes off, and Damien reports that Arcane is down, heading up to the observatory base now. Across the way, Batman holds his breath as he jumps through Phosphorus' fires, getting close enough to land a few punches. Phosphorus shouts that he'll burn him down to slag, so Batman grabs two batarangs, slamming them into Phosphorus' feet. He then takes out a small canister and says that he's heard enough. Just stand still and shut up! He presses the button and a thick foam shoots out, smothering Phosphorus' flame body to the point where he's unable to move. So Damien jumps down, stating that he would like to add that device to his belt. And the two launch their grappling hooks as they start to climb up the observatory when suddenly there's an explosion of light. The light steadily watches over all of Gotham, blinding anyone who is currently outside. And inside, Astrid yells, Can you hear it? The people of Gotham, they're singing! But what Astrid hears as singing, Batman hears as screaming. He kicks in the door, telling Damien that they need to hurry. Every second that passes could be irreversible blindness. Batman charges into Astra, telling her to put her weapons down. You showed empathy for the civilians and the police. Show some for the citizens of Gotham who are going blind by your misplaced anger. She shouts, asking, misplaced! There's nothing misplaced about it! You are a cancer on Gotham and the lost souls are trying to find their way. Batman reaches down, grabbing one of the knight's swords, and Astrid goes on telling him, A wise man once said that only in complete darkness can you truly see the stars. Once Batman is dead and Gotham learns to see again, we'll finally grasp that you were a demon that fed into the darkness and you bring only pain and suffering. Damien runs up ready to join in. I can tell that your optics are broken. You're going to be fighting blind. I'm ready to help. Batman holds out his hand, telling him to stand down. It's between him and Astrid. The two lunge at each other with a loud clang as their swords meet, and Astrid yells that it is proper for her to face the murderer of her mother on this day. And Batman shouts, I wasn't the one who killed her. He swings his sword, hitting Astrid's helmet, telling her, Look, you're a young woman with your whole life ahead of you. And she tackles into Batman, screaming, Not if you're alive! They tumble to the lower level of the observatory, landing in the middle of Astrid's projector. The loud crash rings out through the building, and Alfred yells that they did it. The light has receded in its night again. Batman climbs down, and Damien asks if everything's okay. That was some dive you took. 
Batman tells him, aside from being blind, I could use a hand. So a few days pass, and Gotham slowly regains their sight. With everyone indoors, the city became rather quiet. However, weeks later, Astrid sits chained up in a police transport van when the driver calls back to her that the driver went blind during her little show and slammed into his brother and crippled him. So enjoy those last 10 minutes of sucking free air before they toss her into Blackgate forever. That's when there's a gunshot and Astrid's cuffs fall off. She looks up out the window of the cab and sees the driver is shot. And as she looks over at the other one, he lifts up his shirt. He shows her the sun burned into his flesh and he says that the sun always rises, milady. And the Arkham Knight smiles, telling him that yes, yes, it does. And there you have it. The new Arkham Knight origin is told in DC, making the Arkham Knight officially canon. So what do you think of this? Honestly, I, I completely understand why they did this, because they, Arkham Knight is popular. It's a huge search algorithm thing for them on Google and stuff like that. So it makes sense that they'd want to put the Arkham Knight into comics. And it also makes sense as to why they wouldn't use Red Hood again. I mean, I get that. Uh, but either way, I thought it was okay, but definitely disappointing once the reveal happened. That's why I didn't want you guys to be hyped up for the big reveal of Jason Todd because it's not Jason Todd. Don't forget to give this video a like if you really did enjoy it. Please consider subscribing to our channel so you know what's coming up. And you can also get early access to a lot of our videos if you go over and support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash comic story. And it's how you get your name on the screen. And it helps us out with a lot of stuff. You get some free merchandise over there for just signing up with the various tiers. We just have a whole separate program over there. and We'd appreciate some help. Either way, guys, thank you so much for your support. I really want to know your opinions on the Arkham Knight down below. And I'll see you next time right here.